Janimowski, Pietro Linelli, and Theodore Kedrick, you have been found guilty of the commission of robbery in the first degree. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed upon you? Very well. By the authority vested in me, I hereby sentence you, each and severally, to ten years imprisonment in the federal penitentiary. <laughs> Lovely little kitties, too. Would you like me to take them to the playroom for a little while? Playroom? Who is it? Oh, it's a lovely place. They'll have a fine time. What they do, this place? Well, they play and sing and draw pictures and have a nice lady take care of them. So? So. So I go, too. No, no, not you. Only the children. I'll take them there. Oh, you you bring them back? In an hour or so. Oh, no, no. It's it's the it's the panacea. Signore, sto bruciando dalla sete, non ne posso più. Ho cercato l'acqua dappertutto. Non ne trovo. Mi dica lei, dove posso trovare dell'acqua? Mi fa un piacere. No, well, you're absolutely right, old man. Uh, absolutely. Uh, hey, kid. Uh, wait here, children. I've been looking for you all morning. Well, I just came on duty. You've got to do something for me, something important. Okay, but see if you can find out what this fellow's talking about, will you? Take over the voice of pay. Gli dicevo che ho una sete che non posso più, ma non capisco che mi dice. Ho cercato l'acqua dappertutto, non ce n'è. Oh, mi dica lei dove c'è dell'acqua, mi faccio via. L'acqua, stai parla a lei. Lo giuro, grazie, grazie infinito. You want to drink of water? Come on. Come on. Here we are now. Go ahead. Play and have a good time. Where's Adele? She should be here now. She's supposed to relieve me at 10. Come over here. All right, what's it all about? About your cousin Evangeline from Peoria. Well, I have many cousins in Peoria. If I did have her name, wouldn't be Evangeline. Oh, yes, you have. I met her at the Grand Central last night. Well, why didn't I meet her? You were on duty. Oh. And while I was showing her the city, just as a favor to you, a long thing, my bad. And threatened to break off the engagement. Threatened? She did. You've got to help me square this with Adele. She won't believe a word I say. Well, what makes you think I can convince her? Well, she's always believed you before. All right, what do you want me to say this time? Well, you wait outside till I give you the high sign. Then come in, as if you hadn't seen me since yesterday. And thank me for meeting Emily. Evangeline? Yes, that's right, Evangeline from Peoria. My, you don't know how glad I am to find you here this morning. Not nearly so glad as I was to find you last night, that blonde creature. But I explained that, darling. I, oh, I, go away. But I told you, Adele, I did it because Gary... Oh, was, yes, I suppose Gary drugged you and tied you to her. But she's his cousin. Cousin, indeed. She is his cousin, Peoria, from Evangeline, Illinois. Oh, uh, yes, I, I mean... <laughs> Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I was uh, just trying to hit one of those flower pots. Is that all you have to do? Well, no, of course not. Well, maybe I can do something for you, show you around the island. Oh, are you the guy? <laughs> well, no, not exactly, but I'd be delighted to show you around. That's very kind. But if you'll just tell me where the deportees are kept, I'll be there. The day shipment is due now. I have to meet the boat and take them in charge. If you'd like to go along. Thank you. 
Well, you've had your last chance, Miss Andrews. I'm going to marry Joe Walters tomorrow. But, Adele, you can't do that to me after all the years we've been engaged. Oh, just I can. Unless you prove that blonde vampire is Gary's cousin, I marry Joe Walters the first thing tomorrow morning. Deportation is 75% of our work now. The Gore Outers have outnumbered the Cummerinas since 1932. I've always thought of Ellis Island as an entrance to America. It used to be. Now it's more of an exit. Are all the people you deport undesirable? Oh, no. A lot of them leave voluntarily. It's only aliens with prison records, anarchists, and other troublemakers that are forced to go. Oh, hello, Matthew. Hello, Mr. Collins. Now, look. Uh, here comes today's shipment. Will you wait for me? Oh, hello, Curtis. Want to take a roll call with me? Sure thing. There he is. That's him. Take it easy. Remember, we're here just right seeing. Rebels it. Here. Theta. Maya. Here. Palazzi. Here. Hedrick. Here. Namaste. Lanelli. Here. Duval. Here. Hanson. Here. Beretti. Here. Hawthorne. Uncle Ted. Betty. Gee, it's good to see you, kid. Drop it. Yeah. All present. Sign here. <laughs> well, they're all yours. See you next trip. Good luck. You said so little in your letters. I didn't dare write more. You see... Ah, excuse me. I don't like to break up your visit. But you can't talk to deportees unless you have official permission. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. That's all right. No harm done. You wait right here, and I'll come back and help you get an okay. Thank you. All right, come on, everyone. You got it, man. Io sono Luigi Morelli, amici. Ma guarda, sono troppo. Sei papà, dimmi che vuoi, Felipe, ti faccio uscire di questo isola di libertà. Ma vero, non ha titte, titte. Get away from that man, what do you think you're doing? What did he say to you? Tell me what he said. Well, I'm sorry, I never thought that was a break of rule. I thought he was a friend of mine. Come on, break it up. Let's go. Get out of here, let's go. It's all right, Gary. Matthews. Yes, sir. Take this group down to the deportation building. Yes, sir. And Matthews. And Kendrick and Mouse can't want any place in single. Don't let them talk to anyone. Yes, sir. Come along here. Come on. Curtis, this is Mr. James, the Treasury Department. Treasury Department? He's a special investigator. I'm glad to know you, Curtis. I'm sorry, our first meeting was so informal. <laughs> well, if I'd known who you were, oh, forget it. Curtis has charged the men that you're interested in. Perhaps you better explain to him what it's all about. Well, it's about a million dollar robbery. Perhaps some of these clippings will give you an idea. Oh, I remember this. So does the Treasury Department. The money was never found. You mean there's a million dollars in currency someplace and no one knows where? No one except three men who were completed their prison terms this week and are now on the island. So three of those deportees? That's right. Kedrick, Amarski, and Linelli. The Treasury Department believes the men hid the money intending to get it when they'd finished their prison terms. For the last ten years, they've been behind bars under constant watch. Maybe they tipped off one of their pals. Possible, but not probable. See, there aren't many people that a crook can trust with a million dollars in currency. <laughs> now, I rather believe they intend to sneak back in the country and recover. I see. And, of course, once they're out of the country and deported, well, there's nothing the government can do about it. But I'm here to see that they don't talk to anyone else while it can be prevented. And try to get them to talk to you. Yes, to try. I don't expect to have any luck. As a matter of fact, though, I, uh, I should like to have a private chat with each of the three men. Will you raise that, Gary? Right away. You'll come with me. Thank you. Good luck. Yes, sir. The Marski's in here. Bonelli's in 262 and Kedrick in 263. Thank you very much. Is there anything else I can do? Not right now. Hey, if you have anything else to attend to... You well, know. as a matter of fact, there is someone waiting for me. I'll see you later. All right. Oh, hello. I thought you'd forgotten me. Exactly who are you, anyhow? What do you mean? What's your connection with Kedrick? 
Are you asking that as an official or for your personal information? What's your connection with Kedrick? You know who he is. I do. Are you going to talk to me or must I turn you over to the authorities? Nothing to hide. Turn me over to the authorities if you wish. I don't wish to. But I've left myself wide open for trouble by not reporting that you talked to him. Why didn't you report it? Look here, I'll ask the questions. You give the answers. All right. What do you want to know? Your name. What you're doing here. What you said to Kedrick. What he said to you. My name's Betty Parker. I have a perfectly respectable job in a wholesale plumbing supply house in the Bronx. Ted Kedrick's my uncle. He raised me after my parents were killed. I came here to say goodbye to him and wish him luck. I know nothing about the robbery except what I've heard and read in the newspapers. I've no information about the missing money and don't want any. Furthermore, I've absolutely no desire to be dragged into the mess. Is that explanation satisfactory? It is. Shall we go to the commissioner's office? So he can question me, too? So that I can help you get official permission to visit your uncle. Hello, Kedrick. Who are you? Oh, a tea man. That's what the big shot thinks. Look here. Who's that? The man I took it from. The real Peter James. Hey, what kind of a gag is this? Which would you rather have, Hedrick? Half that hidden million or none of it? I don't know nothing about no million dollars. That's strange. The Nelly and the Morisky do. They're ready to double them. Think up another gag, fella. I'm else coming here. I want a half a million for my trouble. I've already dealt to the other two. Morisky offered me a hundred grand to get him off the island. And Lanelli wanted to cut me in for a quarter of the dough. Now, if you split 50-50, I'll play with you. Go on back to Washington and tell your boss I didn't tumble. You take this with you. You're a chump, Kedrick. You've got everything to win, nothing to lose. How do you figure that? Suppose you pass me up. You only got a long shot chance then of sneaking back into the States and collecting a third of the doll. That is, if they don't double cross you. Of course, you know Linelli better than I do. He double cross his own mother for that kind of doll. Now, suppose I told you the truth. And I'm not a tea man. Then you'll get half a million, sure, instead of a third of a million, maybe. Yeah, providing you don't double-cross me. Well, we'll play the game your way. Can you show me where the money's hidden? Do anything you want to be sure I don't double-cross you. Is it a deal? How can you get me out of here? You forget. I'm a tea man. It's a search. How? 50-50? Commissioner Busy? Yes, he has the men in with him now. Oh, well, we'll wait. We have as much right to see him as anybody. The Marskies allow no missus. Except the immediate relative. Ah, you government monkeys give me a pain. Pin a tin badge on your chest and you start acting like you were Uncle Sam himself. I'm a taxpayer and a citizen. You can't pull any rest up on me. Get off this island. Get off on the next boat or I'll run you all in. You can't treat us like this and get away with it. I'm going to burn a few wires to Washington tonight, and you'll see what happens to you and your two big jobs. Can I be of any assistance, Commissioner? What? Thanks, Gary. Is there something you wanted? Mm-hmm. Uh, Commissioner Carson, Miss Parker. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. Miss Parker would like permission to visit Kedrick. Kedrick? She happens to be his niece. Oh, I see. Well, I have no objection to your seeing Kedrick, but just now he's being questioned by a man from the Treasury Department. If you don't mind waiting... Well, I'm afraid I can't. You see, I have to get back to work. Well, I'm very sorry. Well, perhaps you'll come back to see me. Why, yes. Eight o'clock. I'll have a special permit waiting for you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, 
almost time for the ferry to leave. Well, let's get going, then. Not yet. We want to get there just in time to make a jump for it. You'll listen to Gary when he comes? I'll listen if he comes. I'll have him here in five minutes. Give me that boat ticket of yours. You want I should stick around and watch for the bird? Nah, he'll sleep for a week. your head down. Hey, how am I going to get off of this island? I got enough fix. You figure that out. kind of a pal, leaving me stranded with Adele. I didn't know they came like that. They don't. She's one in a million. One in ten million. <laughs> you bet she is. That's why you've got to square me with her. Square who with what? Square me with Adele, of course. Who do you think I've been talking about all this time? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. See, what's the matter with you? Have you lost your mind? No, not my mind, Chip. Not my mind. Well, I'm losing mine. So please, dear regular, come tell Adele all about Evangeline Peoria and everything. All right, let's get it over. Now, wait a minute. What now? Well, if I go in with you like this, you'll know that you told me what to say, won't you? Wouldn't it be better if I just sort of happened along? That's right, it would. I'll go in and tell her I couldn't find her. And five minutes later, I'll stroll past the window. And I'll call you in. Right, get going. Okay, but don't pull that vanishing act again. No, no, I won't. Remember, five minutes. of the commissioner's office. Oh, I'll be there in a minute. He wants you immediately. Oh. You'll be sorry you made these unjust accusations just as soon as Gary shows up. Captain, I've had a search for the island. Start already, yes? Let me know if you catch him on shore. What happened to him? He was bringing Kendrick here. One of the men found him in the den this closet, knocked out. And Kendrick disappeared. Well, Curtis, I understand there's a girl here on the island who claims she's Kendrick's niece. Well, she is his niece. Sure. And the men who slugged me are his grandchildren. Get that girl and bring her here. Well, oh, I can. She's ashore by now. The whole thing's pretty apparent. She worked with the gang to affect Hedrick's escape. Oh, no, you're mistaken, Mr. James. She had no part in it. She kept you occupied, didn't she? You're in charge of the deportees. I'm going to get ashore right away. Can you get me a boat? Mason, take Mr. James from my launch. Chief, I want the rest of the day off. One four. Find Kendrick, some million dollars, or keep that girl out of trouble? All three. 
particularly to prove to myself whether the girl's on the level or not. All right, go ahead and good luck. No word from the men looking for Kedrick? Not yet, sir. Commissioner. Yes, Adam. I've looked here for him. I can't find him anywhere. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. But Adele's waiting for him. Oh, you're looking for Gary. Yes, of course. You see, I told Adele the girl I was with was Gary's cousin, Evangeline, from Peoria. And Commissioner Carson? Yes. Peter James of the Treasury Department. You are? Yes. I don't want to interrupt, Commissioner, but... but... The man who was here this morning. This officer told me about that imposter. Imposter? Held me up last night, took my credentials, and left me tied up. If you please, Commissioner. Have you tell me everything you know about this affair? Well, the man showed up here this morning. Hey, Commissioner. I haven't timed off you, Andrews. The man's credentials seem to be in perfect order, so I'm just... I just want to know where... You want to know where what? Where Gary went. You see, he's got to tell Adele that his cousin Evangeline from Peoria was... He's on a shower. I gave him leave. Now get out. As the deportees were being taken... Well? May I have leave to follow Gary? You may have leave forever. Yes, thanks. So I told uh, Cousin Evangeline, I mean, I mean, Peoria. I don't know what I mean. I'm very sorry. The man showed up here in the proper credential. So I accept it. Come in. You're a fine kind of a pal, leaving me stranded just when I needed you worse. Oh, for the love of... Who died? Nobody died. Well, why the Fred Astaire costume? It's my bridal gown. I mean, oh, I wore it so that I can get married just as soon as you square me with Adele. Did she okay that idea? She did. She said, I'll marry you just as soon as Gary proves to me that girl is really his cousin. Otherwise, I'll marry Joe Walters the first thing in the morning. So come on, I got a car waiting downstairs. Car? Yes, I bought a Jerry. And you wouldn't need that stuff. Oh, yes, I will. You're going to help me find a plumbing shop in the Bronx. What plumbing shop? The one where Betty works. What's the address? All I know is that it's in the Bronx. You have to look around. Oh, but we haven't time to go up there. Adele is waiting for me. But Adele is waiting for me down there. What's your proof? I told you. Vanelli took the money. I don't know where he hid it. We know better than that. Now come clean. But I told you. Now you clumsy fool, you've knocked him out again. I hardly touched him. You suppose he could be telling the truth? He's taking an awful shellacking. I'd take an awful shellacking myself for a million bucks. I know a couple of ways we ain't tried yet that'll make anybody talk. We'll save that for later. I've got a better idea. You keep your eye on the million dollar baby. Come on, boys. Quarter? Let me see. 
Ah. Oh, I have to do. Well, look. You take this. Yeah. Go over to that door. Now, yeah. you be, be very careful. Pardon me? How do you feel, pal? Where did you come from? My mother always claimed the Stark brought me. Where do we go? You can drop me off any place. Quit kidding. Where's the money hidden? I don't know nothing about no money. Hey, wait a minute. We had a deal. You said if I got you off the island... Yeah, but you didn't. Those other fellas did. Why, you double-crossing... I'll turn you over to the police. Go right ahead. I'll turn you over the same time. Oh, I see. Smarter man than I thought you were. Yeah. Oh, have one? Sure. I haven't had anything as good as that since 1925. Then you've got 11 years drinking to do in the next half hour. Hop to it. Thanks. Tough time finding you. Well, why didn't you wait till 8 o'clock? I'd have been on the island by then. And in jail by 8.30. Well, what do you mean? Have you heard anything from your uncle? No. Now, you don't have to pretend with me. On the level. Hasn't he tried to get in touch with you? Well, what makes you think he might have? Well, the fact is he's been missing since morning. A couple of gangsters sprung him. You mean do it and... Oh, so you recognize those men. And I tried to give you a break. If you think I was working with them, you're mistaken. Why didn't you tell me who they were? I didn't dare. Well, you may not know it, but you're on the edge of being in a jam. The treasure took any minute to measure you for handcuffs. But I had nothing to do with Uncle Ted escaping. Honestly, I didn't. Well, how did you happen to know dude? They went to Sunday school together. Kip, shut up. He came to me not long ago. He learned that Uncle Ted was about to get out of the penitentiary. He thought he'd tell me where the money was hidden. He said that if I found out and didn't tell him, I'd be taken for a ride. And? Well, I told him the truth, just as I told you. I know nothing about the money and don't want to. But he didn't believe me. When I saw him today on the island, I, I didn't dare speak. Oh, I can't say that I blame you for that. I've been worried all day, afraid of what he might do. In that case, I'd better see you home, if you don't mind. If you will, please. Oh, he, he can't take you home. He's got to go with me. I'll go with you later. Ready? Yes.
here we are. Yes, aren't we? Uh, sorry, we can't stick around. It's nice to have met you. Goodbye. You'll let me know as soon as Uncle Ted is found. Right. Hey, aren't you hungry? I'm starving. Well, I... I thought you were. Go wash your face and I'll take you to dinner. Oh, no, you won't. Please don't take him up on it. I won't. Will you keep your nose out of my business? Not till you square me with Adele. Nibble on a sandwich and I'll come back later and buy you a real meal. All right. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Ah! For Pete's sake, what now? You said you had no idea where he was. I didn't know he was here. Honestly, I didn't. I believe you. She wouldn't have screamed. No, of course not. Is he? Well, he's out. Lucky guy. <laughs> He'll sober up before we get back. Come on. Henry, Henry, come step out of it. Let him go away. Let me alone. Get some cold water. Henry! Wake up, wake up, I tell you. Oh, let him alone. He's happy. Come on, we close the door. Is this your furniture or does it come with the apartment? I rent the place then. Swell. Look, look out now. Kedrick, Kedrick, open your eyes. Let me alone. I don't know nothing about it. See, he don't know nothing about it. Come on, I got... Keep still. You don't know nothing about what? The Nelly took it. I don't know nothing about it. Ted, don't you know me, Betty? Huh? I'm your niece, Betty. Oh, Betty. Betty, dear little... I gotta tell Betty. Dear little, sweet little Betty. What is it you have to tell me? It's a... Oh, I can't, I can't, can't remember. You better fill a tub full of ice water. You must remember what it is you have to tell me. Uh, oh, for Pete's sake, tell her so we can get out of here. Gotta tell her about Dan. Gotta tell her about Dan Calimo. I gotta get her with Dan Calimo. No. Pleasant dreams, buddy. Dan Calimo. You know anyone with that name? No, I don't. Look at you're not the kind of a girl that would leave your only uncle helpless like this, are you? Why, I wouldn't think of it. Well, I knew you would. So why can't we let her here till we go to Adele and... Oh, keep still. I'm trying to figure something out. But there's no reason why she can't stay here till he sobers up. He can't walk until he sobers up, and we'll be back in less than an hour. What in the world are you looking for? Bottle. Why didn't you say that you wanted a drink? I'll buy you a gallon just as soon as you oh, can... Shut up, will you? Someone must have carried him here. If he consumed that much liquor on the premises, we'd be sure to find a bottle. Well, maybe he threw it out the window. Window? Mm -hmm. What difference does it make where he got drunk? I wish you'd stop acting so mysterious and remember what you're doing to my future. Well, I'll be darned if it isn't a... Uh, you're right, it's about time we got going. We'll be back in about an hour or so, Miss Parker. All right, I'll turn it on for you. Hey, this is the way out. We're not going out. But you said... Come on and be quiet. I, I don't see any sense in... Well, what are you doing now? Ready? Ready for what? Come on. Get off of me! Oh, it's, it's you. Well, do you mind, mind telling me the reason for this, um, this invasion? Oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I thought the... Uh, the microphone, then. Oh, you, you found it. You brought Kedrick to the apartment downstairs? Certainly. Now you two have probably spoiled everything. Who spoiled what? Say, who is this fellow, anyhow? Oh, they keep Andrews of the island. But this is Mr. James of the Treasury Department. How do you do? James? Peter James? That's right. Have we met before? I've heard that name before, Peter James of the Treasury Department. But for the life of me, I can't face your face. 
Now, let me see. Just where could that have been? You mind telling me how you found Kedrick? Well, that's, that's a long story. Well, let's have it. Oh, be reasonable, Gary. We haven't time to listen to a long story. I told Adele. Don't mind him. Go ahead. Well, you see, I recognized the men that slugged me this morning, so I went looking for them. See, that explained it. Let's go. You found them? Yes, I knew some of you's hideout, so I started investigating them. Finally, I spotted his car near an old warehouse. Hey, dude. Yeah. This is where that dame lives, ain't it? It is. Well, what do we want her for? We have Kedrick, haven't we? Or maybe he'll talk better to keep her from getting the same medicine. Oh, why didn't I think of that? So I poured a lot of good whiskey into him, figuring if I got him drunk enough, he'd talk. Did he? He did, but all he'd say was, I won't tell nobody but Betty. I managed to get her address from him. I picked up the listener and brought him here. Thinking he'd talk to her and you'd get an earful over the microphone. That's right. And if you hadn't tipped him off, I'd probably have learned something. Not for another two days, you wouldn't have. Unky's passed out again. Well, we have got one lead, Dan Salimo, whoever he is. That's right. Suppose you stay here in case he wakes up. He won't. I was like that once, and I didn't come to you. I'll the Colimo lead. And if you learn anything further, you phone me at that number. But, Mr. James, we can't wait here. We have some very important business to attend. Get Kedrick. I'll bring the girl. Gary, wait for me. No use, Gary. We've lost it. You might just as well call it quits and come with me, too. If you say Adele once more, I'll suck you. But there's nothing you can do now. They'll use the girl to make Kedrick talk, find out where the money is hidden, and, and we'll be there first. We'll be where? Wherever Dan Colimo says the million dollars is hidden. What makes you think he'll talk to you? I'll stop on a place and get a gun. Well, this is a nice night for a ride. If anybody likes to ride. Keaton, Kecky, Keddy, Kiefer. Not here. I'll take a look at the birth records. Well, I am going to bring him to you just as soon as he finishes what he's doing. Oh, I know, I know. But it's the truth, honest it is. He can't be much longer now. He's waded through the city directory, the tax list, the census reports, the registered voters, the marriage license, and the pension file. Oh, no, honey, please don't go to bed, honey. Adele, a I'll bring him to you just as soon as I can. Adele, Adele. Oh, fiddlesticks. No Kalimo here? I'm afraid there's a wild goose chase, Mr. Curtis. That's just what I've been trying to tell him. I don't believe there ever was a man named Dan Kalimo. The name is probably an alias. An alias? Well, there's an idea. Possibly an alias for Kedrick or the other two men. So you give me their names and I'll phone the Department of Justice and maybe they can give us some information. Oh, wait a minute. Now, what is it? Look at that. That's his wife. Kedrick Imarski Lanelli. K-I-L-E-M-O. Kalimo. Look, 
You can get Dan out the same way. D-A-N. That's a funny one. They must have made up the name. I don't believe there ever was a person with that name. But Kedrick said he wanted to get Betty to the man. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Do you have the obituary records for 1926? Oh, yes, I have them. Let's but... have a look at them. All right. Here it is. Dan Calimo. What does it say about him? Cause of death over intoxication. Body identified by nearest relative Antoni Marski. Yamaski. Internment at Rosedale Cemetery. Where's that? Little place over in New Jersey. New Jersey? Here, telephone James and tell him. Rosedale Cemetery, New Jersey. No, okay. Thanks ever so much for your help. Perfectly welcome. I don't see where this is going to get you any place. How are you going to ask questions of a guy that's been dead ten years? Well, you wait here. Wait, nothing. I'm going with you. Heaven knows what'll happen if I'm not there. Charles Gil Hooley. What is he going to do when we find this mug? Sit on a tombstone and hold a seance with him? Patience Olson. Here's one with a verse on it. William Wilkinson. The maid he loved, another married. A fortnight later, he was buried. Make a mental note of that. And if Adele marries Joe Walters, you can use that on my tombstone. What was that? That was what? Listen. Come on, get out of there, you That's all right. When else you stay here with the truck? Uh, I'd better go along with you guys. Let Kirk be to look out. I said you know. Now go on, get over there. Oh, all right. Where is it, Kedrick? Right over there. I told you we shouldn't have come here. Ah, here we are. Go to work, Moxie. Come on, Kedrick. Come on, tie him up. What are you going to do now? Sit tight and wait. Wait for what? Peter James. Peter James. I forgot about him. I suppose he'll bring a mess of team in with him. I hope so. I wish I could remember where it was I heard that name before. You don't need her anymore. Why don't you let her go? Well, maybe I will, as soon as I'm sure you've told me the truth. But I have. I swear I have. Well, that's fine, because if you haven't, you can guess what happens to her. Come on, step on it. Come on, hurry up. We haven't so much time, you know. What are you trying to do, scare a guy to death? That ain't funny. Where's the rope? In there. Did you find anything? Sure, five ghosts and ten skeletons. Oh, you... You have not a kid about things like that, dude. It's bad luck. What's that behind you? Where? <laughs> uh, smart guy, huh? huh. No, Rick. But it's dead. Come 
on, sir. Come on, sir. I dare you. Oh. <laughs> Thought I was scared, didn't you? <laughs> And then its bony fingers clutched my throat, and its sunken eyes glared at me, <laughs> and its laugh mocked me. <laughs> and I heard it say, <laughs> You'll be next. <laughs> this guy? Oh, that smart punk from the island. Tie him up, too. Why aren't you with the truck? Oh, I got the willies out there all by myself. Why on, get back there. It'll soon be daylight. <laughs> all right. Someone around here. Ah, that's nails. This joint's got him talking to himself. You better have a look around, dude. Hey, dude. Yeah? We've reached it. You have? Yeah, look at here. Well, keep at it. I'll get nails to help with the lifting. All right, let's get it out. Give him a hand. We'll come back and take care of them.
Untie Cedric. They're gone. Moxie, search. What's the matter? They're loose. We've got to find them. Spread out and start looking for them. I'm glad you followed me. I'm going to need that car of yours. One of the bullets got that tire. You can't have it. Well, then I commandeer it in the name of the Treasury Department. Sorry, that bluff won't work. Bluff? You're no Treasury man, and I know it. Oh. Well, then, will you sell me the car? I'll give you half a million dollars for it. Nothing doing. Put your hands up. Get back there. Sure, get back there. All of you put them up. What kind of chicken stealing ring is this, huh? Well, you got us all wrong. Keep your hands up. Be careful. That might go on. This man's an immigration officer, a government man. That don't give him no more right to steal my chickens than anybody else. Well, I can prove who I am. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Yes, sir. Come on, mister. Did you see two cars pass here the last ten minutes? I ain't even seen one car pass here in the last hour. Business ain't very good. Can I check your oil? They must have turned off. Ah, there wasn't any crossroads. There was a couple of farmhouses. You want the cheap gas or the pink? All right, Kedrick, you're next. Go on, go on. Sorry, I have to do this. I understand. Oh, yeah, sure, no, no hard feelings. Thanks.
Is your phone? Yeah. Watch these men. I'm going to call the treasury department. You take this. Looks like you need it more than me. There's tax going in here. Well, come on. We'll take a look. Now, young fella. Where's the phone guy? In the hall. I got the call I had there. Hey, you two. Come here. Quick, close the door. Go on, get off my property with that gun. I don't buy no hunting on my land. Come back here. They're not hunters. They're gangsters. I don't care who they are. Go on, get off my farm. I'll fill you full of rock sauce. Look out. He's going to shoot. Come here. Let him have it. Oh, you won't get very far with only one load in that shotgun. One's enough. This and I can get him in the line. Moxie, cover the back of the barn. Kurt, you shake down the house. How long will it take the treasury men to get here? Fifteen or twenty minutes at the least. Is there any other way of getting out of here? Might maybe pry a board off in the back wall. I'll go take a look. Adele, uh, uh, this is Kip. Uh, I, I'm over in New Jersey on the Houston farm. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's about a mile from Rosedale Cemetery. Oh, no, I can't bring him to the phone now. He's guarding a girl, a couple of crooks, and a million dollars. He thinks maybe the gangsters may come back. No, I'm not drunk. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, go ahead and marry Joe Walters. Go ahead. And you needn't make those noises either. Adele, hello. Adele. Hey, cut that out. Adele, uh, can you hear me? Now you have gone too far. Interrupt me, will you? Get him. Watch me. Damn. Empty. Hey, Gary. I think there's some gangsters around here someplace. I just saw one. Those fellas ought to be more careful. They're apt to hurt somebody. Take that! Doggone it! Doggone nuisances, they got a sea rounder. I never heard tell of such goings on. But one of them will be picking rock salt out of the sit me down for the next few days. You should have saved that last charge. Saved it? For what? As soon as they find out we're out of ammunition, they'll no, rush it. I got an idea. All them mugs watch is the dough. Why not hand it over to them? That's a brilliant idea. Think they'd leave six witnesses in here to tell the police all about it? Have you got any better ideas? No, I haven't. What hit you? A stolen, just waiting for my hands on the guy that flung it. Well, you won't have to wait long. We're moving up. Papa, put your collar on. Company's coming. Maybe this will fool him for a minute. What a minute. <laughs> Think fast, somebody. They'll wise up to that stall pretty quick. Hey, Tom. Don't hate me. What are those out there? Beehives? Uh, sure. With bees in them? Now, what do you suppose I keep in them? Chickens? Look. Get the money out of the truck and hide it someplace. <laughs> I'll show you. Look. 
It's nothing but a bluff. Okay, you stick your head out. Watch. That settles it. Come on, let's get that million bucks. Hurry up, they're coming. Ready? All tied up. Let her rip. Get him aboard. Come on. That's the last of it, Mr. James. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Right. Let's go, Sergeant. Goodbye, Uncle Ted. Goodbye, dear. How about Joe Walters? Oh, Chip. Yeah? There never was any Joe Walters. No Joe Walters? I made him up. There never was anyone but you. Do you mean to tell me for three years I've been bluffed and bulldozed by a gag? Oh, Chip, I, I oh. love you so much. Wait, that's the... Oh. What did I say? Get in. Get in. Where's the nearest justice of the peace? Third farm down the road to your right. Come on, you two. We'll need witnesses. Oh, Tim, darling. And cut out that blubbering. 